The World Series of Poker main event is a simple proposition. Yeah. Come on! $10,000 gains entry to the ground floor. But to reach the top, players must turn to skill. Don't mess with Wall Street. Luck. They're going to jack. Oh, wow. And Gordon Vale will survive as all in. And courage. The amateur stands up to the worldly pro. Tonight, with an $8 million first place prize on the line, nine players will tap all their resources to reach poker's pinnacle. On a ride that started in July, who will get off last in November? The 2016 World Series of Poker Main Event Final Table. Nine players are left, each chasing a staggering $8 million first place prize. This event is a spectacle, and spectators continue to support the game and their favorite players. This final table has it all. Young, old, dads, millennials, a melting pot of poker here in Las Vegas. Everyone is fired up and ready to go. Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott as we get a look at the chip counts to start the final table. Cliff Josephy with about a 7 million chip lead over Vietnamese-born Kui Win. Jerry Wong and Fernando Pons need immediate help. Josephy, the elder at the table at age 50. Pons, the only true amateur at this November 9. They toiled for seven days in July. Now the biggest moment of their poker careers is here. Hand number one of the 2016 championship final table. Folded to Kui Win with ace four off. He has home felt advantage. He lives in Las Vegas. Plus he has his lucky raccoon hat. Raised to a million and a quarter to Cliff Josephy, the chip leader with queen nine. The only bracelet winner here. He went from picking stocks to picking online games to crush. And says, excuse me, but I will take control. A re-raise to 3.2 million. Everyone else folds back to Kui Win. You know, the chip leader wants to send out an early message and the two big stacks clashing on the very first hand. And a re-pop to eight and a quarter million from Win. A four bet into the chip leader with ace four offsuit. And he cannot continue and Kui Win takes the pot and and the chip lead. Team Kui tells Team Bax, not on my watch, sir. Kui win makes an opening statement tonight. In seating order, let's now meet our November nine. Jerry Wong from Brooklyn, New York. Griffin Benger from Toronto, Canada. Wojciech Ruzicka from Prague, Czech Republic. Fernando Pons from Palma de Mallorca in Spain. Kui Nui from Vietnam. Cliff Josephy, a.k.a. Johnny Bax, from Muttontown, New York. Michael Ruan from Mayo, New Jersey. Gordon Veo from San Francisco, California. Kenny Hallard from Holmesbaker, Belgium. One of those nine to become poker's new world champion. Four chip colors at the table, including the brand new oversized yellow mini frisbees worth one million. Hallard, ace eight of spades. He's going to raise it to a million and a half. Hallert calls himself a recreational player. Yeah, like Warren Buffett is a recreational investor. And the big blind, Wojciech Ruzicka, king five of spades. He's from Prague. Ruzicka studied cryptography at Charles University in Prague. Cryptographers generally do very well on the single scene, but there's just no money in that business. A weak ace versus a weak king, all spades. What could go wrong? Here is the flop, six, seven, four, just one spade. Ruzicka is open-ended. Hallart with a gut shot. A check from the check. Can a poker tournament director win the most important poker tournament in the world? Why not? There's no tournament rule against it. He was the pre-flop aggressor. He'll continue 1.6 million. Hallart does have the best hand. Ruzicka makes the call. Are you going to a World Series Europe in Czech Republic in 2017, Lon? I'm trying to get alone time with Cliff Josephy to back me, but he's not taking my calls. <laughs> Jack of spades, both with flush draws. Hallart, though, has the ace of spades. Ruzicka checks again. Hallart worked as an electrician for eight years in a factory. Big mistake. You never work for the man. You want to work for yourself. <laughs> Hallart bets 5.3 million. I like that bet. Hallart hoping Ruzicka has maybe a six or a four just goes away. And if he doesn't, Hallart has very strong draws.
I'm all in. Wow, Ruzicka's ready to run with it. Wow. Hollert would gladly pay a $2 million chip penalty to take his bet back and see a river card for free. He's got the best hand, but it's only ace high. Now in the muck. Wojciech Ruzicka in it to win it. The bluff shove, what a play. Coming in before play began, we spoke with Wojciech about his state of mind coming to this final table. You know, I just want to go orbit by orbit, hand by hand, and not, not, not distract myself by thinking about, you know, about, about, the, about the bracelet, about my rail, about how, how do I look at TV. You know, I, I didn't come here to look great on TV. I didn't come to make new friends. I just, you know, I just came here to finish the job and yeah, bring the bracelet home. That's it. Sam here, Lon. I didn't come here to look great on TV. Didn't come here to make new friends. I just came here to finish the job. Ah, two out of three is not bad for you. Good for you. Ninth place money of $1 million was paid out to each player when action was paused in July, i.e. ninth place walks with nothing extra tonight. Fernando Ponce, the short stack, all in with a six. The home improvement store supervisor with seven big blinds left. Take a count, please. Yeah, the big blind with King Jack. Joseph, he wants a count on the man from Mallorca. Pons traveled 5,875 miles to play this hand. That's a long trip to move in with a six. And with the monster stack, Joseph, he will look him up and try to knock him out. Pons won his main event seat with a 30 euro satellite. Just a pittance, earning him a seven figure payday. Fernando's rail. And Fernando don't look too confident. And a king in the window for Josephy. Pons now must find an ace. Yeah, Fernando Pons is running out of cards. His first trip to Vegas was to play in the main event. This is his second trip. Turn card is a nine. Doesn't help Pons. Team backs in good spirits. Fernando Pons has to have an ace. The river card. Another King Josephy e. Rivers trips. Fernando Pons out in ninth place. That's one. Pons' first main event ever, $1 million. November 9 short stacks have not fared well historically. Josephy e. takes the win. Ryan Reese, Chance Cornuth, Sean Deeb celebrate with Josephy, e. who's back in the chip lead. Pons came in ninth, goes out ninth. Still a great main event for the first timer. <laughs> yeah, it's just beautiful. <laughs> oh my God, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Michael Ruan and others getting a chance to hold the bracelet if first place was awarded based on family participation. Ruan would win in a landslide. My family, unbeknownst to me, they were all meeting at my aunt's house every night. The entire family, friends, everybody's gathering. Everyone was there and was there from 3 p.m. until 3 in the morning. And I didn't know this at all because they didn't want to, uh, they didn't want to make me nervous. What was the nickname? It was headquarters. They're sitting around a computer. It's not like you're watching a sporting event. You're just sitting around a computer hitting the refresh button. But they would do this for eight or nine hours uh, for three days straight. Every time the money jumped, we were all, you know, losing our minds over here. It was sort of this frenzy of who's coming in and who's coming out. And I just kept supplying pizza. And we're always just going back and forth to each other's houses. My grandparents lived three doors down. I think my grandma maybe got two hours of sleep from day six and seven. She was up all night. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> my mom and dad, God bless them. I mean, they are 84 years old and they're refreshing and they're refreshing. We were the real ones grinding. <laughs> I was up for 13 hours, had to go to work the next day, so were all my brothers, it was, it was nuts. All we can do is refresh. So you have to picture all of us in the room. And there were various satellite locations. Who can refresh faster? Ireland had a satellite location. Mikey was the one sitting at the table dealing with the real stress, but uh, might have been more stressful for us following updates. This is the book we made for Mikey. So the beginning of the book is all of his chip counts. It's quite a, a piece of memorabilia to have. So we wanted him to be able to really look back and enjoy the moments. He's worked extremely hard for this, and we're just, we couldn't be happier for him. Let's go, Mike! Let's go, Mike! Let's go, Mike! The support in my family are just, it's just, they're, they're, they're too much. They're too funny. Let's go, Mike! Let's go, Mike! I'm only going to have this opportunity once, most likely. So I'm going to really treat it, like, as, as, as serious as, I, as one should. Rwand opened with King Jack to a million four. Kenny Hollard has called with pocket sixes. 
By the way, if the Ruan clan wanted updates, I could have called them from the main event floor and put them on speakerphone, no charge. <laughs> Ruan flops open-ended, but it's Hall Art with the pocket sixes holding the best hand. And who wants to hit refresh on a computer for nine hours unless you're Mark Zuckerberg? Ruan bets a million eight. Harlart says, I know I'm not one of the best nine players in the tournament. I just got a good run. And that just makes you want to root for him a bit more. Hallart calls, but you see by the percentages, he's not favored, though he does have the best hand. Gotta love poker. Turn card now is another queen, and Hallart six has just got counterfeited by the two bigger pairs on board. That's why he wasn't favored, even though he had the best hand. Good point. Ruan now with his king and the two pair on board has the advantage, and he checks. Hallart checks back. River card now. Makes it official. Ruan has the best of it. Michael checks. Hallert knows his hand is no good at showdown. And he wants to test the New Jersey Online Poker Pro. 3.6 million from Kenny. Ruan missed his draw and wondering if King High can actually be good here. He makes the call. And King High is actually good there. The Ruan clan doesn't have to hit the refresh button. They can watch that gutsy call live here at the Penn and Teller Theater. In earlier days of the main event, Ruan took his time on the river and often made that right decision. There with a nice call, Michael just one of two millennials at this final table, along with 27-year-old Gordon Veo. This year, a noticeable decline in the youngins from years past. 20-somethings have won the last eight main events, but maybe it's an old man's game again. Maybe the young guns have burned themselves out. Veo on the button with ace tray of spades. Saw 30-year-old Ruzicka open for a million eight twenty-five with queens. On day six with 38 players left, Veo was all in with ace king against aces. He made Broadway on the turn. He should feel as if he's on a free roll for the rest of his life. Blinds up to 400, 800,000 and a re-raise from Veo on the button to 5.1 million. In the big blind, a short stack, Jerry Wong with jacks. Greg Merson, Ryan Reese, and Joe McKeon, all main event champs who wore sports jerseys at the final table. Tough to pull it off in a Knicks jersey, though, and a tough spot here for Pocket Jacks. This 34-year-old was the main event chip leader to begin day six, and he's going to four-bet it to eight and a half million, almost all in. Ruzicka now with his queens. He's not going anywhere. Great spot for Ruzicka. Five bet in progress. He makes it 13 and a half million. At this point, Veo's cards may as well be from a Racco deck. They have no value. <laughs> Veo has five million of his chips in the pot. He'll leave them behind. And Wong calls all in with his jacks. Big trouble against the Queens. Ruzicka has the Florida Pro by way of New York crushed. Ruzicka with a chance to knock off a player. Get a seven-handed. Wong on the chopping block. Here is the flop. Not much hope there for Wong. No, it could be worse. It could be better. Wong still looking for a jack or running straight cards. Turn card now. Four of hearts brings Jerry Wong close to perhaps the end of his main event journey. One time. All right. One, one, time. Time. one time. That's a very late one time request. The river card is paid. Jerry thought it might have been a jack, but it's another queen. He's gone in eighth place. Like Fernando Pons, Jerry Wong simply waited for one hand to play. He just got a good hand at a bad time. Wong, a talented and respected poker talent. Jerry picks up an extra 100K for finishing eighth. Ruzicka now is the chip leader, seven-handed at this main event final table. Not the time to say we told you so, but Jerry, we told you so. Pocket Jacks never win. Nice run, Mr. Wong. We'll see you next year.
Welcome back to the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino. Back in July, 6,737 players entered the main event after two eliminations here at this final table. We're down to seven. Might get down to six unless Griffin Bender can survive his all in. He's had nothing to play, counting on Ace Nine of Spades to bail him out against the pocket tens held by Gordon Veo. They got it all in pre flop. The Counter Strike world champion and fledgling poker broadcaster has had nothing going here. Right now, Griffin Bender has to have an ace or a nine. The river card is a six. Griffin Bender's run of a lifetime comes to an end. Seventh place in this main event. Uh, I was hoping Griffin would win so he'd stop pursuing a poker broadcasting career and stop trying to take <laughs> bread off my table. Seventh place worth one and a quarter million bucks U.S., almost a million seven Canadian. So a nice boost to Gordon Veo's stack as we're down to six players now. Veo's love of poker created an early academic exit about ten years ago. I'm proud of the way I turned out, I guess, but I'm not necessarily proud of the fact that I didn't finish high school by any means. You know, that was something that I was really embarrassed about for a long time, and I, was, I would get really upset when people would say, oh, you dropped out of high school, things like that. No, I didn't drop out of high school. Maybe <laughs> indirectly I contributed, certainly, but it was something that I was self-conscious about for a long time, for sure. Gordon didn't drop out. He was expelled several weeks short of graduation because he played too much poker and didn't show up to class much. Gordon Veo now living in San Francisco with ace 10 of clubs in the big blind will match the two million that chip leader Ruzichka put in with ace 10 of spades. So heads up to the flop. Eight, nine, trade two clubs. Veo with the nut flush draw as Ruzichka misses that. Veo checks. Ruzichka says he's gotten so lazy he only plays online two or three days a week. I understand if you're too lazy to mountain climb, but to play online, all you have to do is wake up, reach for your laptop, and power it on. You don't even have to get dressed. <laughs> Rosicka bets five and a half million. The percentages you see are based on a player winning the pot outright at showdown. Now, Veo, he used to play online all the time. He had initiative. He was just too lazy to drive to school. <laughs> Veo will come along for five and a half million. Turn card now is another club, and Veo with a nut flush. Ruzicka with a useless gut shot. Veo checks it again. Wojciech Ruzicka, the chip leader at this main event championship table, drawing dead, and looks like he wants to donate more chips to the middle. Ruzicka in it to win it. He'll take a shot. Not a good time. Seven and a half million. Veo is a trappy kind of guy. Likes his opponent to take the lead, and he'll keep check calling. This is Veo's first main event cash, and he just makes the call with the nut flush. I would have thought he missed the day in school they taught you how to trap. Another nine on the river. Let's see if Veo can get any more. Out of Ruzicka, he checks again, they both check. Ace-10 versus Ace-10, but the nut flush comes home. Ruzicka might set fire to his cards here as he picked a bad time to get aggressive, and Gordon takes a nice pot. Ruzicka thinking, I hate high school dropouts who turn nut flushes. Gordon used to hear this chant in high school. That's when they were looking for him. Veo solidifying his hold on fourth place. He's on the heels of Cliff Josephy now. Blinds at half million and one million. The ante is 150,000. Anti schmanties. Get rid of the antis. <laughs> Hollard under the gun. Ace queen of clubs. A raise to 2.3 million. Over to Kui Win with pocket aces and that hat. Yeah. To be at the main event final table with a raccoon hat and pocket aces. With Ruzichka falling out of the chip lead, Kui Win is now the chip leader again. A re-raise to 5.7 million. Josephy gets out of the way, as does Ruan. Veo in the big blind, pocket tens. Hallert raised under the gun, and now it's been three bet. The way Veo has been playing, I wouldn't be shocked to see him fold this. Veo gives it up. Well done, sir. Hallart now. The original Razor, ace-queen suited. There is never a good time to have ace-queen. 
and some times are worse than others, this would be one of those times. All in. Oh, no. All in. Uh, All in. Snap call. Kenny Hallard poised to be our sixth place finisher. Hallard is not happy with himself. 35 million chips, 35 big blinds about to be removed from his stack. His main event about to end abruptly. Poker pro Melanie Weisner who cashed in this year's main event in Hallard's corner. You worked so hard for so long to get here and one misstep sends you out into the hot desert night. And now the flop. A queen for Hallard, so that's something, but no clubs. Now that queen does not help Hallard nearly enough. We win, looking to score all of Kenny Hallard's almost 36 million chips. Turn card is a seven. Queen and his crowd ready to erupt. Hallard's path is narrow and short now. Kenny Hallard looks crestfallen. He has to have a queen or he is done. The river card, a four. Wynn will score his first knockout at this final table. Kenny Hollard sent packing in sixth place. A terrific run for the affable poker tournament director, but that last hand will sting for a while. Kui Wynn exerting his influence on this final table. The players are set to take a break, but for Kenny Hollard, a much longer one is scheduled. But right now, Kui Win is the man of the hour with five players left. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. The championship is coming. And at the World Series of Poker main event, that means $8 million and the bracelet. A win is really the, the culmination. It's the, it's the pinnacle. From the start, main event first-timer Kui Win found chips everywhere he looked. Now, Win takes a commanding lead into five-handed action. But four talented pros are waiting for his first mistake. The championship is coming. We win the chip leader right now. He was the wild card coming into tonight's action. His wife and many friends on his rail are loving this thrill ride right now. Win from Saigon, but loves this country. Asked that we put the U.S. flag next to his name. He's got pocket sixes and a raise to two million three fifty. Kui had a bad baccarat habit. He had to sell his car. He had to call family in Vietnam and ask them to sell his home there and send them the money because of his baccarat losses. And now he's staring at a multi-million dollar score because he can play poker pretty well. Pocket eights for Ruan. On. And he says all, all in. in for over 23 million with a bigger pocket pair. Ruan with 23 big blinds. He needs a double up. And this would be for about 20% of Kui's big stack. Wynn did catch a lucky river card against Ruan on day seven to stay alive in this main event. And he's going to make the call with the smaller pocket pair. So Michael Ruan in good shape for a double up here. Sixes, sixes. Ruan thrilled he's not racing with Kui. He's got the chip leader crushed. Kui loves the gamble of the game. He could lose this pot twice and still be the chip leader. Ruan happy in the position he's in right now. Here is the flop. Ruan still good in his double up hunting trip. We went calmly waiting it out. Ruan said making the November 9 was indescribable. Winning the main event would be even more indescribable, but first he must survive this all in. Turn card is a queen, which is not a six, so it comes down to the river. Ruan ahead, but can't sit easily. Yeah, you see him squinting there. Ruan says he has trouble reading the board sometimes. His first piece of business after the final table might be LASIK surgery, but first he's got to dodge a six on the river. The river is a king. Ruan gets his double up through the chip leader, Kui Win. And that's the most emotion we have seen from Michael Ruan. Still the short stack, but with playing chips now. 
Yeah, over 47 million for Michael. Quiwen takes the ding, but still the chip leader with more than 97 million. Michael Ruan, one of the most likable players at this final table. He comes from an online poker background, and most of his competitors say they don't know too much about him, and he wants to keep it that way. He loved Malta, Costa Rica, and Canada, but Ruan was homesick for family, homesick for New Jersey, and homesick for bologna and cheese sandwiches. Quick recap of Ruzicka's main event, his fifth chip leader on day seven, but began this final table in sixth, though he was top dog tonight for about 20 hands. Ruzicka with ace-king and the small blind Salveo Ray with pocket eights. Ruziska's favorite NBA team, the Detroit Pistons. How many Pistons fans can there be in Czech Republic? There aren't even that many Pistons fans in the U.S. With Ace King, he's going to repop it to 8150000 Win Wynn gives up his big blind, so back to Gordon now. Veo has been pretty snug. I'm sure he is not thrilled with that three bet. <laughs> Two very even stacks. Wojciech with a slight advantage, and there's a call from Veo with the eights. Ruzicka, ace king against Veo's pocket eights. And here is the flop, an eight for Veo. Ruzicka in big trouble if he wants to continue here. If they did a study, I'd bet that players who flop sets at the World Series do the best. Yes, skill matters, but so do sets. And a set for Veo and Ruzicka putting chips into the middle with a continuation bet of 6150 slightly more than one-third the pot. For Veo, this is nearly checkmate. Not long ago, Veo won a 31 million chip pot from Ruzicka with a nut flush when they both had ace-10. Now Gordon Veo, with his monster hand, just makes the call. Veo is very trappy. Ruzicka is very not happy. <laughs> Turn card now. Seven of hearts, another miss for Ruzicka as he is now drawing dead. And that's a good looking board for a set of eights. And a better sight. Veo's opponent thinking about putting more chips in. Ruzicka is in it to win it. He has no fear. That is 11.4 million. Such a passive, peaceful looking man with a set. Yeah, with a set. And when he had the flush against Ruzicka not too long ago, he had Wojciech putting chips in the middle voluntarily, too. Veo counts out another call. Doesn't want to scare off Wojciech. Veo does not have a trapping license in the state of Nevada, so this should not be legal. <laughs> River card. Five of spades. I'm all in. All in. I call. Veo call. calls call. all in, and with his set of eights, he scores a huge double up. Set of eights, eight king. Veo with a huge pot, leaving Wojciech Ruzicka with crumbs. Ruzicka no longer in it to win it. All but out of here as he bluffs off almost his entire stack. Veo is now the chip leader. And Ruzicka can say he went for it, but that's little consolation. Once stacked with heaps, he's left with scraps. In case we needed to be reminded, Wojciech Ruzicka showed us that every decision is so critical at a poker table. A bluff at the absolute wrong time gets called, leaving him with little hope. Now here he shoved with ace-seven as Kui Wen woke up with ace-queen of hearts. Ruzicka trying to double up to two big blinds here. It's pretty grim. Another four. All those outs go unused. Wojciech Ruzicka is on the outside looking in, done in fifth place. He played with a lot of heart. No one at this table wanted to see Wojciech Ruzicka with a lot of chips, and now he has no chips. He wins almost $2 million. Kui win closing the gap slightly on chip leader Veo. Ruzicka was trying to become the first from Czech Republic to win the main event. Martin Stashko finished second in 2011. And right now, he is down with our Kara Scott. Wojciech, I need you to talk to us about that critical hand. Um, you know, what's your thinking in that hand there? Uh, <laughs> I was trying to play the hand right, and it didn't work. Gordon made a great job trapping me there, and that's it. Yeah. You've played some amazing poker at, the, at this final table. We've watched some really incredible hands. So as a general overview, how do you feel that you've done here? 
Uh, <laughs> Stuff to do now. You know, you know, you know the, to be at this final table is an amazing experience. Uh, All right, we're back in action. A lot of money. I met so many new people which, which I would never met without getting there. So I'm really grateful to be here. But right now it's, it hurts. and uh, Yeah, but I will be back stronger next year. Thank you so much out in fifth place. We're four-handed. Bayo, who put the big hurt on Ruzicka as pocket sixes here on the button. He is the chip leader. A raise of 2.3 million to win in the small blind, the former chip leader with pocket fours. When Kui first came to the U.S., he worked in a nail salon in Alaska. Then he came to Las Vegas and bought a nail salon where he met his wife. Kui makes the call to the big blind, Josephie, the chip leader, to begin this final table. He's got a queen. He's got ace queen. Josephie is a Mets fan. That's strike one. He's a Knicks fan. That's strike two. And he graduated from the University of Michigan, which makes him a Jim Harbaugh fan. That's strike three and four. A re-raise, though, from Josephie with ace queen to an even nine million. Well, Veo, the original raiser with the best hand, but he got called, and then Josephie three-bet it. Gordon's been pretty snug, so again, I wouldn't be shocked to see him fold this. We did see him correctly fold his pocket tens after Wynn's pressure. Wynn was holding aces, and Veo folds here. That leaves us with the two blinds. And Kui more of a feel guy than a math guy. I'm all in, all in. Wow. All in. He says all in. He's feeling it. And I doubt Josephy is feeling it to risk the rest of his substantial stack with ace-queen. And he can't call. What a gutsy play by Wynn. Team Quee again tells Team Bax, not on my watch. Wow. Wynn has cut quite a figure on poker's ultimate stage. His bets, raises, and re-raises are generally much larger than standard, and that has confounded his opponents. Nice hand, Quee. Thank you. And that hand propels Kui Win into the chip lead, four-handed now with over 112 million. Ruan still the short stack. Action now on Cliff Josephy. Josephy with ace jack of hearts. He's going to raise it up to 2.4 million. Josephy would be the first over 50 to win the main event since Noel Furlong at age 61 in 1999. Cliff with two World Series of Poker bracelets. The only one coming to this championship table with any World Series bracelets. Veo with King Queen. Josephy used to be a financial backer of Veo Online a decade ago. Now they are trying to tear each other's heart out and feed it to the pigeons loitering near the Rio Valley lot. <laughs> Veo in second place now with a re-raise to 8.1 million. Back to Josephy now. Josephy used to do training videos. He says you can teach patience easier than you can teach aggression. And Cliff very measured and patient at this main event to make it this far. Calls for 5.7 million more with the best hand. Here's the flop. It is 10, Jack King. Veil with top pair and open-ended. Josephy with a Broadway draw and middle pair. That flop did not miss anyone, young or old. Veo was the pre-flop aggressor. He continues here with 4.7 million and the best hand. Josephy would prefer to play small pots, but this one is growing. With the middle pair, he makes the call. To mention both with that Broadway draw. Turn card now is an ace. Oh my, Veo scores Broadway. Josephy with aces up now. Gordon's fiance Kate can barely watch this. Gordon met her in high school, uh, I guess on one of the few days he was actually there. <laughs> Gordon bets 10.1 million and gets the stare from Cliff. Well, Cliff makes two pair and it's the worst card in the deck. I, I could see Josephy getting away from this. A queen certainly in Veo's range. He could have ace queen, king queen, pocket queens. Veo had three bet pre flop. Cliff with the two pair, as you mentioned, and a Broadway draw to chop. And those are calling chips. Wow. What a hand this is playing out to be, but that's a letdown. Deuce of diamonds on the river. A deuce on the river doesn't change anything, anywhere, anytime, anyhow. Veo has been the aggressor the whole way, and that's got to tell Cliff something. Gordon now 
Stack of those half million chips adds up to 14.7 million. I bet it's small and fishy. I mean, it smells fishier than Fisherman's Wharf with the breeze blowing in. And you see the furrowed brow on Josephy, and he's thinking the same thing, I think, Norman. Well, Cliff is getting more than four to one on a call here. He knows it's either a straight or a bluff. The fold leads him with over 49 million, and he does give it up. Josephy frustrated, but he makes the right decision one street late. Kate is loving it as her man, Gordon Vale, once again is in the chip lead. So a timely turn again puts Vale in the driver's seat chip leader with four players remaining. The high roller wheel at the link just down the road from the Rio as these four players compete in poker's most prestigious tournament. Michael Ruan, the short stack in the big blind with Queen Nine. And he makes a call for 2.3 million total after Veo opened with Ace 10 and win called with Queen Jack of Hearts. Three players to the flop. Trey 10, 7, 1 heart. Ruan misses. Veo picks up top pair. A check from Michael. Veo worked in a grocery store as a teenager. His job was to walk down the aisles and turn products around so the labels faced the customer. He quit after three weeks, has never worked again. With top pair, a bet of 2.8 million. Kui Win with two over cards. Win has had one job at this final table, confuse his opponents. And he has done that very well. He makes the call, Ruan gets out of the way, will be heads up to the turn. Well, that's an optimistic call by Kui. Turn card now. Four of hearts, Veo still best with his pair of tens. Win with a flush draw now. Great board for Gordon Veo's hand. Veo reaching for some of the oversized yellow mini frisbees worth a million each. Some of each. 7.7 .7 million from Gordon Veo. As you mentioned, Win picked up that flush draw, and he does have two overs to the board. There's only one card to come, though, unless they change the rules forehanded. <laughs> no, they have not. But he does have that glorious rocket raccoon hat and a decision. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. And he says raise. He didn't have to say raise. The thumb in the air is the universal symbol for raising. Of course, it's also the universal symbol for ordering a thumb ring if you happen to be in a <laughs> thumb ring store. And with his four flush, he raises to 24.4 million. When apparently called the flop with the intention of robbing Veo on the turn. That heart probably gave Kui a lot more criminal courage. Veo's been ahead the whole way. Nice answer. But he does give it up, and he folds to the power of Kui. Kui win. Unpredictable, unconventional, undecipherable. With the lucky hat, he continues to run circles around this talented final table. So when I see the head, I like it because I feel like, okay, this, you know, this time who I am when I go in the game, you know, take it down. So you have to be like that. If I go to my grave with that hat on, I will not rest easy six feet under. <laughs> Can we win our chip leader right now. Action on Michael Ruan. Queen eight of diamonds under the gun. Stay active or stay home when it's four-handed. He raises to 2.3 million. Veo on the button with king queen. Ruan, like Veo, also had one real job when he was younger. He worked at American Eagle Outfitters, folding clothes. He also quit after three weeks. With a bigger queen, he makes the call. Queen win, folds ace nine. Josephy now on the big blind with ace jack. Cliff Josephy always has had one job, being Cliff Josephy and living the good life. And it's good enough. He makes the call. I don't like calling there out of the blind with Ace Jack. It's razor fold where I come from. You come from years and years of playing losing poker, Norman. Good for you. Jack 10, 8, 2 diamonds. It's Christmas at the main event. Josephy with top pair, top kicker. Rowan with a straight flush draw and bottom pair and open-ended for Veo. What an action flop like in the movies. But whatever happened to poker movies? What's going on with Rounders 2? Yeah, what is going on with Rounders 2? Four million from Josephy. Didn't Michael Rowan turn a straight flush on day seven against James Opes? He's due for another one. And he knows it. He makes the call. Now Veo with the two over cards and open-ended. He's drawn to the nuts straight. He can't go anywhere. 
And four yellows into the pot. What a flop that was. Turn card now. Another jack trips for Josephy and the big advantage, but he's not out of the woods. Josephy won a stud bracelet in 2005, a no limit hold'em bracelet in 2013. This bet is double the flop bet. Eight million chips here. I believe Mike Ruan would think better if he improved his diet, cut his hair, and lost the shades. He's got two pair now. He'd be okay with a straight or a flush. And, of course, a straight flush works for him, too. He calls. Veo smartly folds. Heads up now. Josephy against Ruan. River card six of hearts, and Ruan comes up empty on everything. Josephy, about 90% certain he has a 100% hand right here. <laughs> All in. And he bets enough to put Ruan all in. Ruan with two pair. Hard to call off all your chips here, but it is possible Josephy also missed a draw. Michael has committed over 14 million to this pot already, but manages a fold there, and finally some fresh air for team backs. New Jersey yields to New York. Ruan down to 28 million now. A tantalizing board that came up empty for Ruan while Josephy reaps the rewards. The Maywood faithful probably getting concerned. Michael Ruan's stack is getting short. That is the bracelet that goes to the champion along with $8 million. We win with nearly half the chips in play as we continue four-handed. Ruan has lost a few small pots and is now just below 16 big blinds. We win under the gun with Ace Jack. When Kui first came to Las Vegas, he played poker at Bellagio. They called him Tommy Gun because of his aggressive play. You can have it. <laughs> I'll take it. Actually. Yesterday, you gave me a five. He's got almost 161 million. He can throw a few around. A raise to 2.7 million. Josephy with a weak ace. He gives away to the small blind, Ruan. King of hearts, queen of hearts. It's go time for the Hoboken kid by way of Maywood. I think it's go time. On. It's go time. Oh. Deo folds a king. Oh, this is an automatic call for Kui with his hand and his stack. It's for less than 10% of his chips. He's good for it. I think he's good for it. Surprisingly, when giving this a lot of thought. 15 what? 15.7. Huh. And there is the call we expected. Win looking for his third straight knockout at this final table. What do you think of Fulham? I'm going to see him. I'm going to see him. King Queen of Hearts, Ace Jack off. He thought for a little bit. He thought for like 10 seconds. We win with a chance to pick up the last of Ruan's chips here. Ruan doubled through win earlier. Hasn't seen a lot of daylight tonight. Looking to survive. And here is the flop. And that flop keeps Kui win ahead. Ruan can see no real help on that flop. Michael Ruan looking for something to extend his main event. The Jack pairs win, but it brings more outs for Michael. That's not going to hit after that one. <laughs> King Queen Suit is not really supposed to lose that one. Jack's a bad card for him. Ruan's got to have a 10, queen, or king. It's a river eight. Win with another knockout. Michael Ruan's journey has concluded with a fourth place finish. Good luck, man. You played really good. Thank you. Thank you. Bring it in. Good luck, man. Nice to meet you, man. Good luck. Kui Win extends his lead. Ruan takes home over two and a half million. Nice. Great family, great spirit, great run. He can buy a whole lot of bologna and cheese the rest of his life now. Ruan's previous best live tournament payout was only 17 grand. He's done a bit better tonight. Right now, the pride of Maywood is with our Kara Scott.
We spoke before this all started and you said that you'd had so many positive comments from complete strangers even really yeah. all over the world. So yeah, can yeah. you explain what this experience has been like in a, a general sense? Yeah, it's been awesome. That's been uh, definitely the craziest part. Even being at the Rio here the last couple of days, people have been coming up to me and wishing me luck. Um, and just like Facebook, Twitter messages from all these people I've never met before, uh, let alone you know, obviously my family and friends are here, but to have uh, people I've never met before rooting for me is awesome. It's been really cool. Thanks so much. We appreciate you, you talking to us. What a final threesome. The legend of Johnny Bax, the promise of Gordon Veo, and the unpredictability of the gambler, we win. Everyone came back to Las Vegas with renewed optimism, but the early eliminations went down as planned. Wojciech Brzezicka's bluff went bad. Griffin Benger defined card debt. Kenny Hallart directed himself out of the tournament with Ace Queen, while Maywood's Michael Ruran's run for the big money came up short. There were so many twists and turns to get here, and the path is just as winding on the way to 8 million and the bracelet. In one of the most unpredictable years of the World Series of Poker main event, only one thing is certain. Tonight, a champion will be crowned. Who wants it? I'm like almost like getting like shakes and like chills, just like having it in my hand. I want to take you home. Take it away before I become too attached. Cliff Josephine. Gordon Veo. And overwhelming chip leader, Kui Win, take to the felt with just one guarantee. Someone is walking into the Vegas night with $8 million. Excitement, drama, uncertainty. It must be the final table of the World Series of Poker main event. Despite the enormous stakes and pressure, 39-year-old main event first-timer Kui Win is at ease with a chip lead. Trailing win is 27-year-old poker pro Gordon Vale, the youngest player, currently second in chips. And then there's Cliff Josephine, the former stockbroker looking to gift himself at age 50 the World Championship bracelet. Juan McCarran here with my longtime broadcast partner, Norman Chad and Kara Scott, as we get a look at the chip counts. Norman, what stands out to you about this final three? The contrast we have, Queen Win is the gambler. Gordon Vale is the prodigy who's been playing snug. Cliff Josephine is the wily veteran. We are ready to get three-handed action underway. And Cliff's wife, Lisa, on the stage. Lisa, 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 I see, going with hat and shades. Mirror image. You want to play like that? I'm going to play like that. I'll play just like you. I don't like this. Maybe it's just for show, but I think you want to play your game, not the other guy's game. A look at the chips in play. The normal size lavender is worth 100K, and the red and yellow oversized mini frisbees much needed with almost 337 million chips in play for our final three. Ace four off for win to open things up, 2.7 million. Kui Win has been the X factor here. No one can figure him out. We took his first lead at this championship table on hand number one going through Josephy. He's got ace queen of diamonds. Josephy, as you mentioned, once the chip leader, Kui Win now the chip captain. Josephy may be better known in the poker world as Johnny Bax, trying to get a read on Kui Win through those glasses. Those are worth a million each. And a three bet to eight and a half million Bayo folds. For the very first hand of this final table saw these two face off with pre-flop fireworks. Kui had the better hand then and got the better of it. Cliff this time with the better hand. Does Kui believe? There's got to be a tell when Kui assembles chips fast or slow, when he repeaks, how he moves his body, but all that's above my pay grade. <laughs> Everyone here has had trouble figuring him out, and is this a four bet, Norman? Kui 
We win. Playing back with a four bet, and Cliff is all in. Five bet shove. Pause is good. It's so good when they pause. He paused. He paused. He's not all in yet. Or he is all in. He hasn't been called. He paused. Oh, a new man. Cliff Josephy channeling Queen Win and Will Kasuf. Oh, I wasn't supposed to talk during hands. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> this hand is exactly Quee's weakness overplaying marginal hands. And I think this is a pretty easy fold given all of Cliff's banter, which indicates strength. 29.9. Echo. And he makes the call! It's a gamble. I know I hit a call. Let's gamble. Hey, gamble. Ace, queen of diamonds. Ace, four, black. Ace four black. Team Queen not happy. All right, no more, no more high fives. No more high fives. Let's go. Let's go. The Queen win playing loose and fast with his big chip lead. Come here, baby. Oh. Cliff brought out the lucky dog. Monty, 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 Monty. Monty. All right, I think I gotta sweat this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Monty's a lucky dog, I'd bring him over to the table to sweat it. Here is the flop, and top two for Josephine. It's a queen! It's a queen! Of course it's a queen. Wall Street always wins. <laughs> Was Cliff like this on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange? The black tray is good enough. Josephine with the big double up. The poker world wondered would Kui win blow up? Well, it looks like it's possible. Let's go. New ball game. This game on, man. Can we hope? Can I count the track or? Okay. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Hard to imagine a better start for Cliff Josephine, a three-handed play. Pause is good! It's so good when they pause. Echo. It's a gamble. Let's gamble. Josephine in much better position at this final table now, supported by a rock-solid family life at home. There are you. My dad made the final table, and it's, like, really absurd. It's been tough. I haven't gotten a great night's sleep. But there's always something to think about. There's always something to do. But I'm loving it. <laughs> I get to play. I get nervous, I guess, about it when he goes deep. So I really, it's more my friends who also get so excited about it, and I try to like lay low. Let's go. And they'll call me and be like, can I tell you how well he's doing? And I'll be like, no, I don't really want to know until he has a break and he tells me. Well, I had played poker for a number of years, being the fish in the game as the guy who made the money in the stock market that would come and dump a few thousand dollars a week on Thursday nights and loved being that guy, by the way. I'm the one who tells him, you know, to eat right and, and to exercise. Is it really? We have some friends and family who are coming to root him on, and I thought it would be cute if we had some hats made. The competition is, is formidable. I mean, these, are, these are very, very good players. We just have to figure out how each person's playing and what's the best strategy to play against each other person. Wow. The old man beat you. <laughs> it happens. Get him next time. I'm definitely loving it.
If you don't believe in genetics after that piece, nothing will ever convince you. <laughs> Continuing three-handed, the blinds now at 601.2 million. Josephy with pocket deuces raises the two and a half million. Veo with pocket trays. Veo, 27 years old, 27 World Series caches. This means he's caching once a year, every year of his life. He wasn't caching in the World Series when he was four years old. Yes, he was. <laughs> he calls with his trays. Win with Ace Jack. Quee said, let's gamble after he doubled up Josephy. He is a gambler. And a re-raise with Ace Jack to 7.7 .7 million. Quee wins coach, young fan, told him tonight to be aggressive but keep the pot small. I'm not sure how you do both. Josephy and Veo certainly would like to play small ball as much as possible. Josephy with the smallest pocket pair. And he calls for 5.2 million more. Veo now with another small pocket pair. Veo has not been that active at this final table, but it has led him to the final three. Very respected in the poker world. And he does make the call. So a family pot energizing the crowd. All right, here we go. And a deuce for Cliff and a tray for Veo. Set over set. Set over set over pre-flop aggressor. We're going to see some chips flying into the middle. Veo checks his stronger set. Wen, who missed that flop, as you mentioned, was the pre-flop aggressor. Obliged to continue here. 9.9 .9 million stepping into the hornet's nest. Yeah, Kui might gamble his way from big stack to small stack very, very quickly. And now Josephy Coolard with a set under set. But Cliff absolutely loves this spot. Both he and Veo thinking the same thing. Let Kui build the pots, and we can eventually take a lot of his chips. Josephy working with the chips, upon which he recently doubled up. Almost painful to watch Josephy descending into the dungeon here. He makes the call. Now Veo with that statue-like face, the dominating set. There is a call from Gordon. And Kate can hardly stand it. It's a trapper's convention, but one of the trappers is trapped by the other trapper. Four of diamonds gives Wen a wheel draw. Well, ace five and five six got there. Nobody has either hand. Veo checks Check. again. We win. The chip leader is done pumping the pot. Well, this is what Joseph has been waiting for. He's 90% certain he's ahead here. Though it might cross his mind that there aren't too many hands Veo would call a flop with, given the pre-flop action. Check, check. 21 million from Josephy. Well, Veo is 90% certain he's ahead here. They both can't be right. Veo's got to figure Josephy would have four bet pre flop with pocket kings. So Gordon very comfortable here with his set of threes. The rails, anything but comfortable. By the way, if Veo just calls here, I'm not 90% certain win will fold. He might check raise just for kicks. On. And oh. Veo is going for it all. That's over 75 million. Win folds. Can Josephy get away from this? This is the hand of the final table, set over set. Josephy just doubled up. If he calls here, he'll be down to eight big blinds. I mean, could Veo have like king queen? Seems impossible. I hate to be armchair quarterback since I don't have arms on my chair and this isn't football, but I think this is a fold. It's hard to fold a set, but is Gordon really bluffing here? Oh, wow, he almost called double checks and does call! And will finally learn the truth. Set under set. I knew he had it. I can't fold it. I can't fold it. He didn't flat the threes yesterday. And he flatted them today. He folded, he folded yesterday out of the small. What? Joe Cata! Where's Joe Cata? We need a two. We need a two. 
We need a two. Cliff was one of Joe Cata's backers of 2009, and Cata hit a big two on his way to the main event title. A two is coming. Smile. A two is coming. Let's go. Two is coming. Put a deuce up there. It's coming. Only one deuce left in the deck. Bayo, one non-deuce away from the chip lead, and he has it! It is what it is. I know, I, mean, I know. You're going to be big one. I almost hold it. I know. He has to have it. He has to have it. And, the, and what, what swayed me was, yes, somebody must have said, you're, you're folding too light out of this, you know. I so whatever, I can't fold it. I need to <laughs> With over 200 million, Gordon Vale's on top with three players left. We got this. We got this. Let's go. I'm not shaking. I didn't make a mistake. Let's go. No mistakes. He knew it, but couldn't do anything about it. It's Gordon Vale now with more than half the chips in play. Back on day six, Gordon Vail was 93% to be out of this main event. With three players left, he's the man to beat with a direct path to $8 million and the championship bracelet. Joseph, he's picked up some chips. He's got over $22 million now. Wynn has the button. And first action, ace queen off. Wynn has had a nasty Baccarat habit, a losing Baccarat habit. The thing is, everybody loses at Baccarat, unless you can figure out some sort of edge. The raise to 2.9 million. Josephy, small blind, king of spades, nine of diamonds. All in. And he says all in. Oh. Nice one. And a snap call, Josephy okay. on the hook. Cliff decided he wanted to gamble there. I'm going to say yes, I'm Oh, thank you. Thank you. I didn't have to do it, but I felt like it. Queen usually doesn't have a hand as big as Ace Queen. Queen now 64% to bust Josephy and go heads up for the title with Gordon Veo. And a huge pay bump that comes with heads up as well. Bring the dog to the table. How about three spades with a nine? Wonderful straight. How about two spades with a gut shot? But Wynn does hit top pair. We got it. I don't think they got it. Cliff and Monty still need help. I, anybody fold the jack? Jack of spades. Did anybody fold the jack? I didn't fold the jack. Oh, Monty, what's up, buddy? Monty. There's a spade. He adds a pair of nines and a flush draw. Nine, ten. This Monty might be the luckiest dog in Las Vegas. <laughs> Queen win still favored, but Josephine now with a host of new outs. Dealer of the year. They would love Dealer of the Year, Nathan Deland, to bust Josephine here. Lisa can't watch. The River Card is spade, and there's the double up. Cliff Josephine lives the good life. Has the hat lost its luster? He's having fun. Is everybody having fun? Sorry, Gordon. You're back to, you're back to even on the day, right? That's, not, that's a back to even on the day. Win is left with 91 million. Shouldn't it be Johnny Runner Runner Spades to save his main event life? <laughs> Joseph he doubles the 46 million. That doesn't make me feel about my king nine fold to you last day. <laughs> <laughs> what a final table this has been. Good day, man. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you got like exactly what you started with, basically? Almost. <laughs> but I was, I was feeling a little better before. Not that I feel bad. I mean, I'm, I'm in a good no, mood. No, no, I mean, that hand was absurdly yeah, brutal. brutal. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I could, I could have folded, but I think I folded just too much yesterday. I mean, it's just so much folding. I was so sick of folding. Yeah, I've folded every small pair for the last two have. days. That's the thing is that you had, you had folded in your small blind yesterday um, to my open, to my yeah. cutoff open. So you're not supposed to have a small pair there. So you adjusted and nice hand. Uh, thank you. I mean, thank you. We played it. Yeah. If you hadn't, if you hadn't folded that yesterday, yeah, right. that was the deciding factor. 
The remaining payouts, some big jumps in there, and eight million to our new world champ. Joseph, he has the button and first action, and he's got the pocket trays. Cliff cannot believe he now gets pocket trays. There's a life lesson somewhere in there. <laughs> Josephy raises the two and a half million. Bayo folds, win, and the big blind. 7 4. Kui says, if I told you I no longer play Baccarat, I'd be lying. He just tries to play smaller now. He gambles more at the poker table. He loves to play pots with Cliff, it seems, and he calls for a million three more. Mahatma Gandhi once told me there's not a lot of future in seven, four, off. Here's the flop. Ace, Jack, nine. Win misses. Josephy's small pair is still good. I like how Quee keeps chips in his hand because he's always within moments of betting them. <laughs> he checks it. Johnny Bax used to be dominant in online poker, but has not played online since Black Friday five and a half years ago. He'll continue with the best hand. Three and a half million. Kui first played Hold'em when he moved to Alaska. In Vietnam, he only played a version of five-card stud where they removed the small cards from the deck. So he was used to playing a game in which you saw up cards, and it was a 32-card deck. Suddenly in Hold'em, he couldn't see anyone's cards, and it was a 52-card deck. First he lost, then he learned. Oh, he has learned. And look at this, a check raised to 9.7 million. And the Kui win we've seen here is not planned by the book. He's not going by optimal game theory or mathematical probabilities or merged ranges. He is simply applying pressure again and again and forcing the other guy to make tough decisions. He's got twice the stack as Josephy feels he can afford to take chances and afford to be wrong. But gets Cliff to fold and the hat is back. Kui Win is writing his own book. He is playing the player. Kui Win giveth, Kui Win taketh away. More three-handed action after this, if you can stand it. Welcome back to the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino. We are inside the Penn & Teller Theater for the World Series of Poker Main Event Final Table. Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. We play down to a champion tonight. It's been a thrill ride to this point. Action on the button, Kui win. You do not want to stare directly for too long into that raccoon hat. <laughs> it's like staring directly into a Kardashian home. He folds 8-7 suited, Josephy in the small blind. All in. With Queen Trey is all in, he's lost a few chips, so this is worth 18.7 million. Vail with King Six. Yeah, Cliff all in for 11 big blinds, and I think this is a call from Gordon. Less than 10% yeah. of his stack. I'll take that. I'll take that. He does call, and he's got Josephine in bad shape. Queen three of diamonds against king six off. Queen three of diamonds. Yeah. He's got king six, hard diamond. I had a. What's that? Surprise, he called Veo has what he wants here. He can knock out Josephy and go ball. heads up with the chip lead against Kui Win. And with a big pay bump, here's the flop. Top pair for Veo, bottom pair for Josephy. King on the flop is hard to recover from, but Wall Street always finds a way to win. And the chip leader to start this final table is only favored to lose the rest of his chips right here to Gordon Vail. Money, we're using all your luck. They're not using that lucky dog correctly. He should be on the table playing dead. <laughs> Gordon always looks like he's thinking like about meditating. Three is cleaner. A black three. Three is three spades. Three is spades. Turn card. Four of clubs and Gordon Vale one card away from going heads up. This brings Cliff Josephy to the moment he never wanted to see. Okay. I want to drop him. Let's go. Queen ball. Queen ball. Queen, queen. Queen, queen. queen, queen ball. Just one queen. Where is it? Kata couldn't look. <laughs> I'm going to look, though. I got to look. He wants to see a queen or a three, or he's gone. The river card, the deuce of clubs, and that's going to do it. Gordon Vale knocks off the sentimental favorite. Cliff Joseph, he's made of it. Run of a lifetime is over. Nice job. The final table chip leader ends a disappointing right. third. I tried. I tried. Gordon Vale 
Mayo will take a nice lead in the heads up as Cliff Josephy will leave to collect his biggest ever poker payday. We are heads up for the bracelet and the $8 million payday. While Veo and Wynn get ready, Kara Scott is down to talk with Cliff Josephy. What an incredible few days of poker you have played. The deck really didn't do you any favors here today, but let's talk about the experience as a whole. The overall experience was absolutely wonderful. Um, the support I got from all of the fans, from my, from my family, which were obviously amazing throughout this as, uh, as I was a center of attention and didn't do my job around the house for months. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, my coaches, those guys were awesome. And uh, you know, everybody, all the staff here, What's that money doing there without me? <laughs> but yeah, I tried my best and uh, gave it my all, and it is what it is. So. Is there a moment that will stick with you from the entire main event? No, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. That's a, that's a quick one, sorry. Who do you like here heads up? I know that's oh, a tough that's question. It's a tough question. I'm not answering that. Too smart. <laughs> You're too I'm smart too for smart me. For Thanks so much for talking yeah, to us. When we come back, that bracelet and that cash on the line, 27-year-old Gordon Veo, 39-year-old Quee Win battle to become poker royalty. We are down to heads up here at the main event final table. Either Quee Win or Gordon Veo will lead tonight with that bracelet. Contrasting styles here. Quee Win, pressure, pressure, pressure. Gordon Veo, patient, looking to pick off big win bluffs. Veo and the small blind is also the button heads up. Ace Queen worth a raise to four million. A smaller ace for win. But he doesn't mind the weak ace nine handed or heads up. And there is a re-raise to eleven point nine million. This is the second time Veo has been heads up for a World Series bracelet in twenty fourteen. He was runner up to Davidi Katai in a no limit hold'em event. And there is the call for 7.9 million more from Vail with Ace Queen. All right, here's our flop. King Jack Trey, two hearts. Win misses. Vail with a Broadway draw. Win, 39 year old former nail salon worker and owner. Vail, 27 year old veteran online pro. Big blind acts first post flop and heads up play. Pre flop aggressor. Here comes 17.7 million. Veo tries to emulate his coach, Tom Marchese, in terms of an even-keeled approach. Never get too high, never get too low. Take it one hand at a time. Like you do with your marriages. Like I do with my marriages. Veo with the best hand. Broadway draw makes that call. Win wondering, why did you make that call? <laughs> Turn card now. Deuce of spades. Veo's bigger ace still leads. Win did pick up a wheel draw. I don't think it matters that Kui picked up a gut shot. If the turn card were an eight of diamonds, he'd probably fire if he senses Veo is on a marginal hand. And Veo has just been calling. And look at that tower of yellow chips. That's 39.9 million. Pressure, man. That turn bet represents one quarter of Veo's remaining stack. Veo's best, but it's no pair. And he does fall to the pressure. Quee Win does not play ABC poker. He's playing with letters from an entirely different alphabet. <laughs> Quee's got to be Quee at a full table or one on one. And look who's no longer the chip leader. Nope, the main event rookie has taken over in the closing stretch. He's having fun. Kui continues his unorthodox style of play, taking another pot there with the worst hand. Without much previous World Series experience, Wynn has proven to be more than up for this task. What a remarkable story. He bottomed out playing Baccarat, lost his car, lost a home in Vietnam, even lost his nail salon because of Baccarat setbacks. Now playing in his first main event, one elimination away from $8 million and world champion of poker. Veo with ace nine in the small blind during the four month break. Veo won a no limit event in Oklahoma for almost 600,000. A raise there to four million. Win with queen five of clubs during the four month break. Win went fishing with his son Kyle. And he makes a call for 2.4 million more. Here's a flop. Nine, 10 ace, two clubs. Win with a club flush draw. Veo with aces up. Action flop. Actually, almost any flop Queen Win sees by default 
is going to be an action flop. He checks it to Veo. Gordon with the best hand. Continuing for 3.7 million. Win, nicknamed Tommy Gun for a reason. He fires a lot of chips into a lot of pots. He knocked off three players in a row at this final table. And look at this, a check raise to 9.7 million with his draw. Well, that check raise is by the book. It, it gives Kui two ways to win this pot. He might take it down right here. If Veo was just C betting with nothing, and if Veo calls, Kui can still get there with his flush draw. Of course, Kui might be check raising with two ticket stubs to Lucky You also. <laughs> there is the call for six million more from Veo. Yeah, with big hands like this, Veo will simply be in call down mode. A king there, and Kui adds a Broadway draw to his reasons to bet. Well, here comes the Kui win bluffing train. Right on time. <laughs> choo choo. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Boy, this is a lot of chips. That's a pot size bet, Norman. 27.7 million. Pot size bluff or, or semi bluff. I think Gordon likely will just call here and give Kui another opportunity to stab at it on the river. Veo with two pair. He has seen Kui play the gambler. And he does make that call. This is exactly what Gordon is waiting for. Big, big pot. And he'll just pick off Kui's bluff if he fires again on the river. And the river card. As a club, and there'll be some firing as the flush comes through for Kui win. Oh, no need to bluff. All in. Yeah, all in. And Gordon Veo has a pit in his stomach the size of the Goodyear blimp. Veo had him the whole way, had him right where he wanted him the whole way. What a river. What a brutal river for Gordon to look at. The board paired, but not his ace or nine, and the flush got there. He can only beat a bluff, which Kui is capable of, but if Veo calls here, it's over. He's out, and Kui win is champion. Oh, Veo's second pair got counterfeited. As you mentioned, got the paired board out there in the three clubs. It's the worst river in the deck for me, and I still don't believe you. If you don't believe, you are gone. He does manage a fold. Kui Win takes control. Gordon Vale thought he had him. He set him up. And then he got rivered. In the end, Gordon makes the correct fold. But it comes with a price. Kui Win, stock and stack are rising. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. In the ultimate high roller, Kui Win is showing he more than belongs in this game. He has baffled and dazzled this final table with a brand of poker that keeps you so off balance, it knocks you right out of your seat. For more on Kui, let's check in now with Kara Scott. Kui is a Las Vegas local, but he still decided to stay here at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino during the November 9, so he'd be closer to the game and have less to think about in the morning before play started each day. Now, his friends told him that he should actually stay here alone to avoid distractions from family, but that's just not Kui's style. He said he tried it, but he missed his wife and his son, and he had them come and join him. He said he can't sleep properly unless he tucks his son in at night, and so having family around is actually helping him focus and sleep well. Kui met his wife when she worked at the Las Vegas nail salon he was buying, so that was a good deal. He got a salon and a spouse in one transaction. <laughs> Blinds are up to 1.2 million and 2.4 million with a 400K ante win with Jack Five of Diamonds. On Kui's third attempt at a satellite, he won his main event seat. His family urged him to sell the seat worth $10,000. Lucky for them, he did not. There's a raise to 6.7 million. Veo, 
Looks down at queen nine off. Veo would be the ninth straight 20-something to win the main event. That streak started with Peter Eastgate in 2008. Veo starting this hand with a million fewer chips than Kui Win. He calls for 4.3 million more. But you know, maybe 39 is the lucky number. Greg Raymer was 39 when he won in 04. Joe Hashin was 39 in 05. Jerry Yang was 39 in 07. Kui Win is 39. Top pair for Veo. Two clubs hit the board. Veo checks to the pre-flop razor. Yeah, this is a familiar pattern. Veo has the best hand. Win's going to bet. Veo's going to check call. Kui always obliges with a continuation bet. This one is worth 9.7 million. And this is pretty much Gordon's game plan, heads up. Wait for hands, let Kui win, bet at it, and pick him off for a lot of chips at the end. Fail with the best of it. Puts together calling chips, and they're in the pot now. And you know, Gordon's game plan would look a whole lot better right now if Kui didn't hit the flush in the previous hand to win that huge pot. Turn card, 10 of hearts. That keeps Veo ahead. But he's still letting Kui lead the way. And Kui is still drawing to a pair. But his hand doesn't matter often. It's the amount of chips he puts into the pot that matters often. Good point. He loves to move chips. And the chip leader wants to move another big stack of yellows. That is 27.7 million. And when you're calling down a lot of hands like Gordon is, you need to be prepared to make mistakes, and you need to be prepared to pick off bluffs. I think Gordon's game, though, is built for that. You know, incredibly, at age 27, Gordon has been picking off bluffs almost half his life. Veo. Wondering, is now a time for a check raise? Is, nope, just a call. Of course, a check raise there probably ends the hand. Underscore probably. You just never know with Kui Win. River card now is a five. That pairs Kui Win, but he cannot win the hand in the showdown. Veo checks a third time. Yeah, as you mentioned, Kui hitting one of his draws, making a losing pair of fives. All in. <laughs> what? He said all in? Gordon keeps playing defense. He's just not equipped for this offense. Can you really call off all your chips with second pair? Win dangling the chip lead in Veo's face, but in there also the possibility of being knocked out with a call. You know, I'm not even sure if Kui's all-in is a bluff or if he thinks he has the best hand, but maybe that's what makes it so smart. Kui keeps putting Gordon in awful positions. Most players would just be happy to get the showdown. Veo has to suss this out. Chip lead, knocked out. You have to separate the two to find a clear answer here. And he does fold angrily. <laughs> Kui win. Gordon Veo is either frustrated that his style of play that he's chosen is not working, or he thinks the cards are conspiring against him. Either way, he's trailing. Kui win is taking poker back to the future. He leaves me breathless with his plays. Nice hand, Kui. Thank you. Gordon is beflummoxed. I really was planning on calling that one. <laughs> sometimes I've got to do it, sometimes not, so I don't know. Wynn's certainly enjoying oh. himself here, but the time with his family is what he enjoys most. The summer time is the most of the time I spend time with my son. You know, we go to the bowl, fishing. I'm not really thinking about the event. I just did very relaxing. I feel sorry for the fish when he's fishing. He'll bluff them right out of the water. <laughs> Well, and then sometimes Kui has a real hand. Ace, queen of diamonds here. More than a four and a half to one chip lead for win. A raise to seven million. Theo with a small suited queen. And with that weaker queen, he makes the call. All right, here's the flop. 
And there is a queen for both, but when, of course, with a top kicker, it's checked to him. That flop, not good news for Veo. All these chips are going to be in the middle of win bets here. There's the bet. 9.9. Gordon with 21 big blinds left. All in. All in. Check raise all in. Oh. And a snap call. Veo finally played back, and he's got the worst of it. Win two clean cards from this title. I think most people would have picked Veo in this heads-up match. Win looked like he might blow up on the very first hand of three-handed play, but instead, Kui has bluffed and grinded his way to the brink of this championship. Gordon Veo is at risk and crushed. Kui Win can taste victory. Runner-up for Veo doesn't taste so good. Now Veo with a bevy of outs, flush and straight draws on the turn. Hello, 18 outs, but Veo's still a dog to fend off elimination. You like that turn, please? That's what happened, Good. Well, good life, man. Well, like, good, man. The same thing happened last time. Oh, I won't even show you, you know? Same thing. Win, you win, you know? So, that's what you can do. We yeah, got a fun turn for you. We got a fun you know? So. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sam. <laughs> Booker, I want you to have a tank. So that's how you get. This might be it. The river card is a spade, and the match will continue. Gordon Vale with a tournament-saving flush. Vale's crowd looks like Oprah just gave away a free card to everyone in her studio audience. <laughs> We win still the chip leader by an overwhelming margin, but still he thought he had it. Well, Cliff Josephy stayed alive against Kui with runner runner spades. Now Veo stays alive against Kui with runner runner spades. The crowd and the Penn and Teller Theater loving the drama here. Veo with a crucial double up, and it's back to work. And the shades go back on for Kui Win. A look at the last three World Series of Poker main event bracelets plus the one this year's champion will take home. Before the break, Gordon Vale doubled up to nearly 120 million chips, but since then he's lost a lot of small pots. Wen continuing to grind him down, bluffing when he needs to, catching cards when he needs to. This heads-up match has been pretty lopsided, Norman. What did Albert Einstein once say? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Veo has stuck to his check-calling, check-folding game plan. It hasn't worked. It just feels like a matter of time before Kui puts him out of his misery. King 10 of clubs for Kui Win. 8.5 million is the raise to Veo now. Jack 10 of spades. Jack 10 suited is the Swiss army knife of poker hands. It's good in all types of situations, including shoving when you have 17 bigs left. Just bad luck for Gordon here. On. Yep, there it is, all oh. in. He's ready to rumble, and a call from Wynn. Wynn's got the best of it. Vail with another uphill climb. Gordon Veo began heads up with the chip lead, but it has been exasperating, frustrating, and exhausting for him against the Las Vegas Gambler. And again, Kui Win, the former nail salon owner, on the brink of the title. <laughs> Gordon Veo, once again, on the bottom end, looking up, and there's a king for Win, top pair. Veo with a straight draw, of course. Now, Kui has had his fill of runner-runners. He doesn't want to see a double gutter deny him here. Oh, I've never seen him. It looks like he's wearing like a Rocky Raccoon hat when it's backwards. And it's What? We're going to do something easy. We're going to do it tomorrow. We in a great mood. Gordon remains upbeat. This is crazy. Well, I'm so oh, tired. Man. I know you're so tired. I'm so tired. So tired. <laughs> the main event is a grind. Veil <laughs> needs help. The turn card is the deuce of spades. No help to Veil. Queen win one card away from poker immortality.
Anybody follow the queen or Nate? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you just have to love the way Gordon Vale handles himself. Can Vale pull out another double up or is this Queen's time? Vale needs a queen or an eight or Queen win is main event champion. And the river card is a tray and Queen does it. Good game, man. Yeah, good game. Is the 2016 World Series of Poker main event champion. Queen Win win rewrites the book of poker and writes his name into poker history. Huge paydays for both. But second place is tough nonetheless. It was a journey that began in Vietnam, continued through Florida, Alaska, California, and finally Las Vegas, where we now call Quee Win a world champion. What a performance, Norman. He was unpredictable, unconventional, and at this final table, unbeatable. And now he's $8 million richer. Give it up for Quee Win. Reckless early. Echo. It's a gamble. Let's gamble. That's a queen! That's a queen! An aggressive late. Queen Win battled his way to the chip lead. One, two. And ultimately the title of main event champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just should not kill all, all my all my fans, all my family. It's so sad and so I don't know what to say. <laughs> For Norman Chad and Kara Scott, I'm Lon McCarran. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next year.